morning, football fans. Welcome to week number two of SEC Kickoff. I'm Vince Stooley. Week one is in the books, and it's time to get prepped for week two. The action heats up this weekend as more conference games begin. However, before we preview the upcoming weekend, let's take a look back at week number one. Here are my observations on the key games from last week. South Carolina at Vanderbilt, and as expected, Vandy was tough. The key to the ball game is Connor Shaw. Had he not been able to go back in after he hurt his shoulder, I don't think that uh, South Carolina would have been able to win that football game. But he and Marcus Lattimore had over 200 yards between the two. I like this Vandy team, and I particularly like their quarterback, Jordan Rogers. Tennessee versus NC State. The first game of the Chick-fil-A kickoff classic in Atlanta. Tennessee is a much improved football team from last year. They have a strike force. Tyler Bray, their quarterback, threw for over 330 yards. And their surprise receiver, junior college player named Patterson, who caught a pass for a touchdown of over 47 yards and ran a reverse for about 67 yards and showed some real speed against a very fine NC State secondary. The defense is much improved. They had four interceptions. Sal Ciceri, defensive coordinator, will help this Tennessee football team. Auburn versus Clemson, the second game of the Chick-fil-A kickoff classic in Atlanta. This was a nip and tuck, hard fought football game that uh, went into the fourth quarter tied. The difference in the game, the running back of Clemson, Ellington, 25 carries, 228 yards. That's 9.1 per carry. Auburn's quarterback, Frazier, showed some impressive parts of the ball game, and I think they'll get much better as the season goes on. Alabama versus Michigan in Dallas. Alabama ended the season dominating their last football game to win the national championship. They opened the season this year dominating once again against a very fine football team in Michigan. It is what up front that counts, and once again, the offensive and defensive line of Alabama was just totally impressive. The question was, what about the running back? Well, they've got three of them, and one that took the scene early was a young freshman, T.J. Yeldon, from Daphne, Alabama. And he's going to be another great one in the long line of running backs at Alabama. But the guy that I like is the quarterback, A.J. McCarron. He's a great engineer. That's quite the start of the SEC football season. A lot of great games, a lot of big plays. And speaking of plays, it's time now for a segment I'd like to call Football 101. Each week, I'll break down a key play from the weekend. You know there's about 150 plays in a football game, but there's only about three or four in each game that actually make the difference. So you never know when that play will come. It may come early or it may come late. Let's look at a key play in the Vanderbilt-South Carolina game that came early. Well, early in the game, Vanderbilt went down to South Carolina's five-yard line and on third and six decided to throw a throwback screen and their up back hoped to get a little lost in here and he moved out here, but it didn't fool number 54, Wilson, because as Rogers rolls out and throws back, Wilson makes an incredible play for a linebacker, a real athletic play, intercepts the ball and brings it out to the uh, 50, and then two plays later, Lattimore scores on a 30-yard run. So it not only was a one-touchdown turnaround, it was a two-touchdown turnaround, and there's no question it was one of the big three or four plays in that ball game that made the difference. Well, that's one way you can break down a play. Us coaches have a tendency to do that from time to time. It's now time for our weekly coach one-on-one sit-down. This week, we hear from one of the new kids on the block, at least in the SEC, because Gary Pinkle has been in Missouri for 12 years. He'll talk about his team preparing to host the Georgia Bulldogs this weekend. It's going to be a storyline every after every single game. You know, how a week? How did how did how did A and M and how did Mizzou uh, stack up to the SEC? And that's good. That's the way it should be. And and, and the great thing about it is it's it's an answer on the football field. I would like to think that our offense would be an advantage for us. Not only the offensive schemes that we use, but the tempo 
of our offense. I also have great respect for the coaches in this league and the personnel in this league and understand that like anything we ever do every year that we coach, we make adjustments. We make adjustments based on what our people do against us. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do the same here. Well, now that we've heard from Coach Pinkle, let me give you my thoughts on Missouri's first SEC battle and other matchups from around the SEC. Georgia and Missouri kick off at 645 Central on Saturday night. The game will be broadcast on ESPN2. This is going to be more than just an interesting matchup. First of all, we've got two coaches highly respected that have been to their respective institutions 12 years each. They both have a different philosophy. The Missouri coach, Pinkle, has a spread offense, quarterback that can run and throw, whereas Coach Rick has been the pro-style offense with an excellent quarterback who's got a lot of experience. And they also found a running back, I might add, in Todd Gurley, who has great speed and great vision. I think the big question, how will Georgia do defensively? It's gonna be a challenge to go out there and play in Missouri. They have lost their safety man in Rambo and also the and Ogletree, the linebacker. Both are all-star football players. It's gonna be a great football game. I can't wait to see it. Another important matchup this week will be the Auburn Tigers visiting the Mississippi State Bulldogs in an SEC West showdown. Just like last year, the game is very important as both teams look to get off to a strong start in conference play. For this week's SEC flashback, let's take a quick look back at last year's game between the Bulldogs and the Tigers. It was an early season shootout on the Plains that ended with a last minute touchdown drive and the ball on the one yard line. Saturday, when the Tigers and Bulldogs get together in Starkville, it is sure to be another back-and-forth classic. Both teams will have an early wake-up call as the game kicks off at 11 a.m. Central Time and will be broadcast on ESPN. Here's what I'll be looking for. I believe Auburn's going to have a real challenge in Starkville coming off the emotional loss to Clemson. Mississippi State under Dan Mullins has an excellent football team, well balanced, they run the football extremely well. The challenge will be for Auburn to tackle better than they did against Clemson, and I think that's a big factor in this football game. As the games get a little bigger in week two, SEC teams will have to step up and correct opening week mistakes. It's often said that teams make the most progress from game one to game two, and I think that's normally true. Certainly, Auburn will have to work more on tackling, and I'm sure they'll be much improved. You may ask, well, what is Alabama going to work on? Well, I can assure you that Coach Saban will find a lot of things despite the fact that they dominated the ball game against Michigan. With that, here's the rest of my weekend rundown and the games I'll be paying attention to on Saturday. It will be a battle of the Carolinas when the South Carolina Gamecocks take on the East Carolina Pirates in Columbia. This game will kick off at 1221 Eastern Time and will be televised on the SEC Network, so check your local listings. Here are my thoughts on the game. Well, there's no question that the East Carolina Pirates will come to play in Columbia. The big question is how bad is Connor Shaw's shoulder? One thing we know for sure that Marcus Lattimore will be the difference in the football game and I have really been impressed with the way that uh, Steve Spurrier has 
changed and adapted as a football coach to the material that he has at South Carolina as opposed to some of the incredible material that he had at Florida. The Florida Gators visit College Station to take on the Texas A&M Aggies. This is the first conference game for the Aggies and will kick off at 2.30 Central on ESPN. To add to the excitement, the ESPN College Game Day crew will be on campus. Here's what I'll be watching. Well, the Gators answered some questions in their opening ball game. They found a starting quarterback in Jeff Driscoll. They also have a running back in Gilsley. This guy went for 148 yards and has got great speed. On the other hand, A&M did not play, so we don't know a lot about A&M in that respect. They had to cancel the game with Louisiana Tech because of the hurricane, and I think this will give Florida a slight advantage. But on the other hand, they're playing in College Station, and that's a tough place to play. Everybody's anxious to see Coach Kevin Sumlin, whose offense at Houston for four years broke a lot of NCAA records with his high-flying offense. A&M, who had one of the greatest offensive years they've ever had, returns eight starters, but they're gonna start a, at least a redshirt freshman quarterback. We're in for a lot of excitement, and we'll find out a lot about the Florida football team and the A&M football team when this game is over. The Washington Huskies from the Pac-12 head east this weekend to battle the LSU Tigers. The Huskies will get to experience Saturday night in Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge as the game kicks off at 6 p.m. Central Time and will be broadcast on ESPN. Well, the LSU Tigers had expected to have little trouble against North Texas, and it's amazing that they won as easily as they did and dropped three places in the poll. But nevertheless, I think the, the big question was, how will Zach of Mettenberger do? And he did extremely well. The guy can throw the football. Washington will have uh, a heck of a challenge. But I'll tell you, I've been impressed with their coach, Sarkeesian, who is a very fine offensive coordinator, and uh, will give uh, LSU a good test. It'll be a lot of fun watching LSU in Washington. Well, folks, I have enjoyed talking a little SEC football with you again this week. I hope you're excited for the upcoming college football weekend as I am. The games are beginning to get even more serious. I expect to see some great action on Saturday. I hope you enjoy your football weekend. I look forward to seeing you next week on SEC Kickoff.